How many of you tonight can say you're ready to let go and let God? Let God have his will in your lives tonight. Amen. I know there's so many times in my own life that I felt that I needed to do that, but I wouldn't. I was too ashamed. I was ashamed of my failures, my mistakes, my shortcomings. Many of you have probably heard my most recent song that I sent out the radio. It's called Trophy on Display. That song was a story of my life. Everybody knew me for my failures, my mistakes, my shortcomings. All those wrong things I did in my life, those were my trophies. But when I let go and I let God and gave it all to Him, He gave me a new trophy. That was His mercy. His grace upon my life. I'm telling you, I'm glad to know that Jesus saved my soul. How about you tonight? Amen? I'm glad to know that I'm a child of God. Child of the one true God. Amen? Child of the King. All right. If you got your Bibles with you tonight, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 10. Somebody say amen when you get there. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto ye the whole armor of God. Let's go back and read that again. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Make note that it didn't say just grab you a piece of it and you'll be all right. It says grab the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may be a, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. You know God's called you to do something greater, but you don't have the boldness to do what God's called you to do. You need to pray tonight and ask God to give you that boldness tonight in this service. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds or in chains, you could say, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done in this revival service this week so far. Lord, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do tonight as we open our minds, we open our hearts, God, to be able to receive your word, to be able to receive the message that you have for us to be able to hear tonight, that you will send us home tonight different than the way we were when we came in. God, we know revival is intentional. Revival is not something that comes along once a year. Revival is when you make it up in your mind every day that you will walk in a renewed spirit. God, we thank you for that revelation. Lord, I pray for each and every person sitting under the sound of my voice tonight that if they are here and they are in a lost condition, or if they are a Christian and they are in a condition that they don't know how they're going to make it through, God, I pray tonight that you would make a way for them to make it to this altar. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to try to be quick tonight. I'm going to try not to jump around and scream and holler too much like I did last night. That way I, maybe I won't lose my voice and we'll get through till tomorrow. Or I'll have to call one of these fellas to come and preach for me. 
In this set of scripture, the Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus to encourage them to be strong in their faith. We look back at chapter 1, verse 13. I want to read to you. It says, In whom ye also trusted, that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The seal or mark of ownership in the believer's life is the Holy Spirit. When we jump down to verse 14, it says, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the to the praise of his glory. The guarantee of our inheritance is the Holy Spirit himself. Now I'm going to tell you something that's exciting. The Greek word for guarantee can also be used to indicate an engagement ring. As Christ is the bridegroom, the church is the bride. So the Holy Spirit is basically the down payment, the earnest money, and the long-awaited marriage of the two. You know, the Bible says we are the bride of Christ. And one day Jesus is coming back for his bride. And the Holy Spirit is basically the engagement ring that has come upon us. Come on in here, Holy Spirit. Go ahead, just let's just tell God your spirit is welcome here tonight. You are welcome in this house. The word, the purchased possession in the Old Testament describes the nation of Israel as God's special treasure. God purchased the nation of Israel through his mighty works. What we spoke about last night, the mighty works that he did in Israel, in Egypt, bringing them out, the plagues that he did. The things that happened, the Red Sea parting, he saved Israel by his mighty works. But let me tell you about a man named Jesus. Because there came a time in this world and with Israel that they forgot about God. They forgot about all the great things that he did. They forgot about the wondrous acts that God did. And so God sent a man named Jesus to die on a cross. And so in the New Testament, Paul is describing the Lord's own possession, possession, which he bought with the blood of his son, Jesus. Aren't you glad to know that we serve a God that is willing to even give up, give up so much that he would even come to the point that he would give up his one and only begotten son so that we could have eternal life. Amen. So that we would have an opportunity to achieve salvation. But it's not by anything that we've done, but it's what Jesus did on that cross. It's all about Jesus and the blood that was shed because I get in my mind seeing him on the cross. And I think every drop of blood that was spilt had a name assigned to it. Come on, man. Every drop of blood that hit the ground, if you read the scripture, it tells us when that blood hit that ground, there was an earthquake. Could you imagine the power of the blood? That when it hits the earth and it causes things to shake, it causes a change in the atmosphere. I'm telling you what, when you get saved and you get the blood applied to your life, there's a change that's going to happen on the inside of you. There's a shaking that's going to take place inside of you. You may say that there's been an earthquake that's hit your soul. That's the blood of Jesus that's been applied to your heart. Amen? If you're here tonight and you don't know who Jesus is, there's an opportunity for you tonight. Because tonight we're preparing for a battle. I've had two guys already come to you tonight to tell you about the battle that they have faced. I'm going to teach you tonight how you can overcome the devil when he throws these battles your way. Amen? We have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We put our sin behind us and now we're walking in the light of his righteousness. Amen? We have been reconciled to Christ. Jesus is the chief cornerstone how many of you are glad to know when you got saved? Do you know what that did? That made you a citizen in heaven. Right. Oh my goodness. Are you glad to know you've got a you've got a deed to a land, piece of land over there that Jesus paid the price for? You didn't even have to pay for it. But we own a clear title to a mansion. Amen. Yeah. 
I'm glad to know that it's not just a cemetery plot somewhere on a hill for my dead, wretched soul, but I've got a place in heaven where I'm going to get to live for eternity. How about you tonight? Yes, Have you ever thought about the fact that you are heirs to the throne of heaven? It's no longer just about Israel, folks. It's no longer just about the apple of God's eye being Israel because we were grafted into that family. Now we are part of the apple of God's eye. I'm glad to know that when Jesus looked down off that cross 2,000 years ago, that He looked down through time and He saw each and every one of you and me. You know, Him being man, He knew it was going to hurt. Him being God, he knew that what they were going to do to him. In that garden, he prayed, Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Because he knew what was coming. But yet he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He died for us. Now I want to know tonight, are you ready to walk as children in the light? Jesus is that light. Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's go back to verse 11. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've come by to tell you tonight there is a spiritual world that is unseen by man. The prince of this world is not Jesus. The prince of this world is the devil. The devil rules, rules the air and the land. But let me tell you, he cannot do any more than what God allows him to do tonight. Amen? Amen. I've come by to tell you that fight, that battle that you've been facing, that battle is not with your neighbor. That battle is not with your family member. That battle is not with your boss. It is not with your co-workers. That fight is against every devil and demon in hell that has come against you. That battle is not against our government. I'm glad to know my faith in my Jesus is stronger than the faith that I have in my government tonight. Amen? Amen. That's worthy enough to give God some praise for right there. My faith is stronger than any demon in hell that may come against me. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you tonight. Your faith should be stronger than those demons. Amen. There was even a place in the scripture where the apostles turned around and they came back to Jesus and said, Even the devils are subject to us. And he said, don't rejoice because the devils are subject to you, but rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life tonight. I've not come by here tonight to get you excited about fighting demons. I've come here tonight to tell you to get excited because as a Christian, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life tonight. Praise God. Amen. Yes, Submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Many people forget that first part. Submit yourself unto God. Yeah, yeah. We think we're all high and mighty and powerful that we'll take on the demons ourselves. Go tell that boys, tell the boy, tell that to the boys back in the, in the New Testament when they went out. They didn't know Jesus. They just heard about the Paul, the man named Paul, the apostle that was going out casting out demons in Jesus' name. And he came to him and he said, "We we cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches about." Let me tell you what happened. If you don't have the authority backing you by the name of Jesus Christ and you don't have Jesus in your life, you've not accepted Him into your heart, you have no authority to be going around trying to cast out demons. Because let me tell you what them boys did. They got whipped. They went home crying and naked. If you don't have your heart right with God, don't you come up in here pretending to be some demon slayer because you're not. Tell it. Tell it. Submit yourselves unto God first. Seek ye first, Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these other things will be added to you. How many of you tonight are seeking God? How many of you can say you're seeking God's face and not His hand tonight? I'm telling you, when we look past the face of God and look to the hand of God, we've missed what God is really about. It's not about what you can give me, give me, give me. God is not a vending machine. This isn't Burger King. You don't get it your way. You come to God on His terms. When God says, you do this, then I'll do this. It's not you coming to God saying, well, God, if you'll make this work out for me, I'll do this. 
When God says you do this, you do that, then God sends the increase. Amen? Amen. It's time that we start following the Scripture the way God laid it out. We wonder why all hell breaks loose in our life. Because we're not following the teaching of God. We're not trusting God with our life. And then what happens when things go awry in our life? We blame God. I want to tell you tonight, just as there are guardian angels that have been dispatched from heaven to surround you, Satan has summoned demons from the pits of hell to attack you. You may not agree with this, and if you don't, that's all right. We'll lay hands on you and pray for you after service. Every move that you make is being influenced by the ruler of darkness. Now you may not believe that. You say, well, I'm a Christian. Jesus lives in me. Let me tell you, you may be a Christian, but you're living in a sinful world. We were born into sin. Sin is our first nature. You will always have a devil that is chasing you. How many times have you thought in your mind, well, I'm going to go to church Sunday morning, or I'm going to testify, or I'm going to witness to somebody. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. But then you get it in your mind, well, I'm sure somebody else has already talked to them. It'll be all right. No, we're at Walmart. I don't need to pray for these people in Walmart. Somebody's going to look at me like I'm crazy. Come on. That's the devil influence in your mind. So don't tell me that he's not got to you this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why it's important we as Christians prepare for the battle. Yep. When, how many of you to, tonight came in last night and you made it up in your mind that you was going to walk out renewed? You were going to walk out of here a different person. You were going to walk out better than the way you came in. And then tonight the devil told you, said you don't need to go out there tonight. You were there last night. You already know what it was about. I'm going to tell you, the only way that you're going to overcome the attack of the enemy is by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. We are living in the last days, folks. Jesus is about to return for his bride. The devil knows this, and his strategy is to get you bound and chained that way that you can't be set free. He wants you bound in chains. Let me tell you, the devil wants you bound in chains of depression, just like the, the woman that come up here last night has been suffering with depression. Let me tell you what, I bet God, I believe God touched her last night. The devil wants you bound in those chains. He wants you bound in those shackles of anxiety and stress. Let me tell you, if you don't believe it, come talk to me afterward. I'll tell you what the devil can do for you. He wants your finances so strapped that you don't have the opportunity to be a blessing to another Christian. All right, come well. on. That's what the devil wants to do in your life, and he wants to attack your mind. He wants to put those thoughts into your mind. But if you don't put on your helmet of salvation, you've got nothing to, that's going to repel those fiery darts off of you when he comes at you. There you go. It's important that we wear the full armor of God. Because let me tell you what happens when you get that breastplate on. You get that belt on. You get your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And you've got your mind set up. You're going to go out and you're going to tell somebody about Jesus. You make up your mind. You're going to get out there and stand on the street corner and hold your little cardboard sign that Jesus loves you. But then you make it up in your mind because you let the devil penetrate you because you didn't put your whole armor on. You didn't go out wearing your helmet of salvation. And the devil got inside your mind. He got inside your heart. And you decided, I'm not doing that today. Yeah. Let somebody else go out there and preach on the street corner. Yeah. I'm not come, I've not come by here to tell you that you've got to go preach on the street corner. I've come by here tonight to tell you when Jesus speaks to you about preaching, when Jesus speaks to you about teaching, when Jesus speaks to you about witnessing to somebody in Walmart or the grocery store, what you're not saying is God has given you an assignment to be able to bring a blessing into your life and be able to bring salvation into another person's life. But when we are disobedient to wear our armor and we allow the devil to get into our heart, we allow him to get into our mind, then we have just robbed somebody of their blessing. You just robbed yourself of your blessing. And you want to be a blessing to somebody and lead them to Jesus. If you're not obedient to the Word of God and you're not obedient to the Scripture and wearing your armor, when the devil puts those thoughts into your mind, guess what? You just got whipped. Yeah, yeah. Tell the truth, man. I know when I stand before God, I want to hear Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
I don't want him to come to me and say, Nate, you were a great guy, you were a great singer, or, or this or that, but I never knew you. We discussed that last night. There's going to be even the very elect are going to be deceived. There's going to be people that sit in line church pews every day of their life that are going to burn in a devil's hell because they never met Jesus. Come on, man. Tell the truth. We've got a lot of pew warmers. We've got a lot of people that sit on their hands. God touches them and says, why don't you just raise your hands and praise me? And then we start sitting on our hands because we're afraid of what the neighbor beside us might think. Mm -hmm. If you're not afraid of what your neighbor's going to think about you, go ahead and throw your hand up here and give God some praise tonight. Let's go ahead and just praise Him tonight. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise and come say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Go ahead and tell him, say, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in my life. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be a blessing to somebody. Yes, sir. You know how you're going to overcome the attack of the devil? We are in a physical realm of existence. The devil is in a spiritual realm of existence. You can't look around in this room tonight and see the devil. You can't look around in this room tonight and see the demons of hell. You can't look around this room tonight and see the angels that have been dispatched from heaven to protect us from these demonic spirits that have come in here tonight. Tonight, I'm fixing to give you some weapons. Because let me tell you, you may not realize this, but my God never left us without our weapons. Amen? Not only will He give you the armor, but He'll give you the weapons of attack that you can use against the devil. And let me tell you, this right here is your weapon. You want to know how you can get into the battle of the spiritual world? It's through the book that He left us in the physical world. Amen? This is our road map. This is our weapon. The Bible says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. What good is a soldier without a sword? There you go. A soldier that goes to battle without his sword will die. This is our weapon that God has given us. And if we fail to use it, if we fail to read this word and hide this word, his word in our heart, one day we're going to find ourselves in a battle and we're not going to know how to get out of it. How did Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan, how did Jesus overcome the attack of the devil? He used the word. If you don't hide God's word in your heart, you won't have anything that the Holy Spirit can use to bring to remembrance. The devil was a liar, church. Bible says that God never gave us a spirit of fear. But many times in my life I've been fearful. How about you? We're at church. It's okay to be honest. The ceiling's not going to fall in on us. I promise. These, these rafters have been reinforced. Fear is a liar. And Satan is the father of lies. Don't get caught up in the attack of the devil without your armor on tonight. Amen? Somebody go ahead and give him a hand clap of praise while I take a drink. Number two is prayer. It's so simple. Prayer. Your prayer life. You know, Jesus is our commander in chief. We have to communicate with him. How do we do that? We do that through prayer. We do that through obedience. You know, even at one point the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants our obedience. Your prayer language is a weapon yeah. against the devil. The knowledge of the scripture is a weapon. That's probably the most important weapon. Prayer. Communication with God. Anybody can tote around a sword. 
but do they know how to use it? Come on. That's what I want to ask you tonight. Are you a pew sitter in a church or are you a soldier? Are you a soldier in God's army? Are you ready to be a demon fighter? Because I'm telling you what, when you get your heart and your life right with God, that's what's going to happen. The devil's going to attack you on every side. You're going to wonder, why is my life not perfect? I'm a Christian now. They told me that everything was going to get better. Well, somebody lied to you, brother. Because the devil's going to attack you even stronger when you get to go trying to live your life for Christ. That's why it's important you know about the armor. I want to ask you tonight, church, are you prepared to fight against the devil? Are you prepared to fight against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness in this world? I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I believe we're living in the last days. Yeah. That scripture you mentioned earlier, Joel 2.28, I'm telling you what, if it was the land, and then later Peter even said, this has been fulfilled in your hearing today. Let me tell you, 2,000 years ago, that the return of Jesus was evident, that it was coming, that they were living in the last days. How much more important should we be looking now for the return of Jesus? Right there. Right there. We are living in the last days, church. Jesus is about to step out on the clouds of glory. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for a spotless bride. He's not coming back for a dead, falling apart, decrepit church. He's coming back for a Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized church that's wearing the armor, that's ready to fight. Because you may not know this, and if you don't, you think I'm a liar, go read in Revelation. We are coming back with Jesus after the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we will fight in the battle of Armageddon, and we will be victorious. The battle has already been won. We are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We got royal blood flowing through our veins. We are King's kids. Hallelujah. That's good. Are you ready to fight tonight? I'm telling you, I serve a great big God that is bigger than any of my problems. Amen? Yeah. Who's excited about Jesus in here tonight? Amen. I'm telling you what, y'all thought I was coming in here to bring you a bunch of doom and gloom tonight, didn't you? <laughs> Preparing for the battle, but I'm telling you what. Somebody come on up here and give me some music playing. I want to encourage you tonight. Jesus loves you. Amen. You know, we've got some younger ones here tonight. I want to talk to you guys for a minute as they're coming preparing the sun. You guys are going to school. You're hanging out with your friends. There's a time that's going to come with you being knowing who Jesus is. There's going to be a time coming. And you're going to get to have the opportunity to talk to one of your friends about Jesus. I want to encourage you to open your Bible. Read. See what God speaks to your heart. You're going to be able, God's going to use you. Could you imagine the God of the universe? The one who created everything? Cares enough about you? To say that he wants to use you yeah. to be able to reach somebody. And you've got, I'm going to just tell you, you kids that are in school, you guys have got a mission field yes. right there in your schools. Yes, they do. You don't have to go across the world. You don't have to get on a boat and go overseas to be able to talk to people about Jesus. Yeah. You can do it right there in your own schools. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. I've come by tonight to tell you your redemption draws nigh. And do you know Jesus? The devil, I told you, will attack your mind. September 10th, 2001, that night I went to bed. Now you all going to think I'm crazy. I dreamt about the events that were going to take place on September 11th. I was still living at home in West Virginia. I woke up that morning, I missed my school bus, and I told my mom when she took me to school what was going to happen. I told her, I said, a lot of people are going to die today. She says, I'll quit talking like that. A couple hours later, we all know what happened. I was involved in a church when I moved here to Alabama. Church for years I was at. When God spoke to me to write my first book, my church came against me. They attacked me. 
My church showed up at my house to physically try to hurt me. I'm not saying that because we need to attack people. I'm saying that because you have to know the strategy of the devil and he will try to attack you. He will try. You've got to remember we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against those principalities and the powers, those demons. Remember I told you earlier our mind is influenced by demonic spirits. Some of these people that I've faced in my life were influenced by demonic spirits. I'm going to tell you, you may think I'm crazy, but when I was two years old, I experienced my first encounter with a demon. You may say, Nate, you don't remember being two years old. Yeah, I do. When you experience an encounter with a demon, that's something you're not going to forget. I was sitting in the bathtub taking a bath at two years old when the devil first showed up in my life. When I first recognized that there was something that he wanted in me, that he wanted to destroy me. When I was about five years old and we moved to West Virginia, I experienced another attack of the devil upon my life when I was laying in bed one night and I began to see eyeballs that appeared all over my bedroom. And you all may think I'm crazy, but it was just eyeballs that appeared in the mirrors on the walls everywhere. I covered my head with that blanket as a kid and I thought, I'll hide from these things. They showed up under my blanket. It seemed like there was nowhere that I could hide, but yet I closed my eyes. And I thought, I know I'll be safe here. These eyes started popping up on the back side of my eyelids, and you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but there was nowhere that I could hide. I got up out of that bed, and I ran into my parents' bedroom, and I stood there for what seemed like an eternity, just waiting to be embraced by arms that I knew that I would be safe. I'm telling you tonight, if you're facing a demonic attack, you're facing a, a spiritual battle in your life, you're, I'm telling you, as the brother said earlier, you need to run to an altar and make it right with Jesus and feel the warmth of His embrace hugging you. You need to feel the safety of Jesus upon you. Amen? I'm telling you, demons are real. They may be in a, in a spiritual world, but there are certain ones that can tap into this physical world. Let me tell you, there were times that when I moved to Alabama that I wasn't living exactly right, but I knew God was speaking to me to get right. I was spending my time in the bars and nightclubs and going places and other things that I was doing that I had no part doing. Let me tell you, when God started speaking to my heart and I started getting back in church, trying to do what God told me to do, there were times that I woke up in the middle of the night being held down in the bed. Let me just tell you, and this may scare you, but I'm telling you what's coming your way, church. I'm telling you because when you make it up in your mind that you're going to follow Jesus, and no matter what the devil throws your way that you're going to follow Jesus, you will come under attack. There's times that I woke up through the middle of the night and I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, I couldn't do anything but sit there and cry and just cry out to Jesus in my spirit because that's all I could do. I moved to Albertville a few years ago. I had this house all to myself. First time ever being out on my own, I was so excited. It's like, finally, I've got my own place. I'm going to be able to do my own thing, have friends over, have parties. Well, that was shot down real quick because all of a sudden, things started happening in my house. Things started moving. Things started showing up in different places than where I had originally put it. One time I found my keys in my refrigerator. I found all kinds of different things that had been moved. At one point my house became infested with mice. I had a buddy of mine that came over. As soon as he walked through the door, he said, there's something not right here. He said, what is going on in here, Nate? And I don't know if I've ever told you all this or not. But he came in and he said, you've got an evil presence in this house. He says, mice like this. I'm telling you, mice, rats that were falling over each other, that were eating each other in my house. Let me tell you, there was a spirit of demonic presence in that house. And I told him, I said, you're crazy. He says, Nate, you know I'm a ghost hunter. And I told him, I said, I don't believe in no ghost but the Holy Ghost. I said, but I believe when we leave this world, our spirit either goes to heaven or you're going to hell. There's no in-between. There's no purgatory that somebody can pray you out of. Amen? You either know Jesus or you don't. 
And I told him, I said, I, you can believe what you want, but I don't believe in ghost hunting. I said, I do believe that there are demons. He said, Nate, you've got demons in your house. And I said, you've come by too late to tell me that because I already know. You think demons aren't real? They're going to show up. And they're going to show up when you least expect it. Let me tell you what happened. I was in bed one night. I was laying in my bed. And I was asleep. And let me tell you, you are body, soul, mind, and spirit. Let me tell you what happened. I was laying in that bed. I was asleep. I was unaware of things that were happening around me in my house while I was asleep. Let me tell you, the devil is never asleep. He will never calm down on the attack that he's got on your life. As I was laying in that bed, I woke up to the sound of somebody talking in my house. And I lived alone. And I thought, somebody's in my house. Somebody has broken in on me. And I got scared and I got nervous. And then I realized the person that was talking was me. In my sleep. And I was praying. I was casting out a demon in my sleep. Saying, God, get this demon out of my house. And I was sitting there saying, I command you, devil, to leave this house in Jesus' name. I was casting that demon out in my sleep. Let me tell you, you may be asleep in your flesh, but your spirit is still alive and awake and alert to what is going on and around you in your life. Amen? Yes. When I realized what was happening, I got scared. I pulled them covers up over me. The guy was never even going to make it out of that house. And you all may think I'm crazy. You may be thinking I'm making this up, but that's all right because we'll pray for you later. Let me tell you what happened. I said, God, you've got to help me. And then at that moment, I was so scared that I had never been in my life. Behind my head, I felt a presence that was not God. How many of you know you can come to church and you can feel the presence of God? You can feel the Holy Spirit in church and we can lift him up. We can give him praise. But let me tell you, there is another weapon that I've not told you about yet. That weapon is the power of praise. And God told me, he said, take authority of this demon that is in your house. He said, give me praise. And I said, yes, Jesus. And I said, Lord, show me what to do. He said, take authority of this evil spirit that is in your house. I've come by to tell somebody tonight, you can pray all you want, but sometimes God's going to leave it up to you to learn to take authority over the demons and the devils that have come against you, that have attacked themselves to you. And you've got to learn to say, get behind me, Satan. There's a prayer, there's a weapon called praise. It's called Judah praise. Judah means praise. When you learn to start speaking praise off of your tongue, there's no devil in hell that can stand to be around you. That's the power of life and death in your tongue. When you choose to give God praise. That's good. That's good. I prayed. And I said, God, help me. This thing is standing over me. It wants to devour me. It wants to kill me. What do I do? And he said, take authority. And I said, devil, get out of here in my house in Jesus' name. And let me tell you what happened. That devil had to flee. Because right, right. remember, we had to submit unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Let me tell you, in an instant, that devil took off out of my house and it never came back. And I'll tell you what, somebody I was telling the next day, they said, well, did you get up and check the house? I said, I didn't need to. I rolled over and went back to bed and slept like a baby. I said, because that's the power of my God. Amen? That's what Jesus wants to do in your life. When you learn to take authority over the devil and the demons of hell that have come against you, he will give you peace that passes all understanding. He'll take those things that the devil meant to destroy you, and he'll turn it around to bless you. Amen? I'm going to tell you, I went to church that next Sunday. I had written a little article on Facebook, and a woman told me, said, I like what you wrote. She said, that really touched me. And I began to tell her about the incident that happened that night when the demons showed up in the house. And I told her, I said, you know what? I said, I was in my bed asleep the other night when a demon came in. 
And I said, I cast it out. I woke myself up talking. I woke myself. I did this. I did that. I cast that demon out. I did this. And the Holy Spirit grabbed me and said, why are you telling her this? And I said, God, I'm trying to give you praise. I'm trying to give you the testimony, the glory for what you spared me from. And he said, then why do you keep saying I? When God spares us from the attack of the enemy, we have to be careful not to steal God's glory. The glory is due to Him. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but if you're like I am, I've come by to serve notice on the devil tonight, church. We are the bride of Christ. Jesus is our bride. He's coming back for His church. And I'm telling you what, there's no power or no devil in hell that can overcome the body of Christ tonight. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you, the devil can torment us all he wants. But it's time for you to serve notice to the devil that he's not getting in your mind anymore. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you, once he gets in your mind, he's got you whipped. I want to encourage you tonight, put on the whole armor of God. We are king's kids. We've got royal blood flowing through our veins. And I'm going to tell you what, just like the day in Passover when they had to put that blood of that lamb upon the door, I've come by to tell you tonight, if the devil wants you and you're a child of God and you've had the blood applied to your life, he's going to have to walk through the blood to get to you. Amen? That's the kind of God that I serve. Let me tell you what. How many of you may say, well, I can't serve God the way I need to. The devil's got my finances straight. Well, I've come back to tell you the Bible says prophesy and pour into your faith. Let me tell you, maybe what you need to do is prophesy to that situation that you've been going through in your life. Maybe it's time for you to prophesy to your bank account and tell that in Jesus' name, I command you to give me the ministry finances that I need. I command you to give me the money that I need to take care of my family to be able to do what God's called me to do. Maybe you've been suffering through cancer, sickness, or disease. Well, maybe it's time for you to prophesy according to your faith and say in Jesus' name, sickness, I command you to be gone out of my body. Come on, somebody. It's time to serve notice on the devil that we are not sick and diseased Christians. We're not going to fall for his traps. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that day that I made Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen? Amen. And, uh, we believe Jesus can go ahead and give him a great big hand clap tonight. Go ahead and give him the praise to do to his name. Amen? I'm glad we serve a God that isn't too proud that he won't leave his throne in heaven and come down and hang out with us. Amen? Amen. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus left his throne in heaven to come down and live and die on a cross for each and every one of us so that one day that we can live eternally with him in heaven. I'm telling you what, I don't know any other king that would get up off his throne to come and hang out with a bunch of wretched sinners. Amen? But my Jesus did. <laughs> my Jesus came down to save us. Amen? Amen? I want to tell you, there was a couple of Hebrew boys. Three of them to be exact. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Or in West Virginia, we say, your shack, my shack, and Billy Goat. <laughs> Some of y'all laughed at me when you get it. <laughs> Old Nebuchadnezzar had them thrown in the fiery furnace. And he says, did we not just throw three men in there? He said, I see four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, the fourth one is under the Son of, the man, son of God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what happens when the devil comes against you. I'm telling you what is so awesome about our God and his armor that he gives us. I'm going to tell you tonight, and I'm going to shut up. There's one piece of armor that God never gave us. Do you know what it is? He never gave us a back plane. He never intended us to turn and run our back like a dog with our tail tucked between our legs. He intended us to head straight on and march into battle against the devil. Amen. Amen. That's why when all them fiery darts come at your chest, you've got that chest plate on. But let me tell you, when the battle gets hot, it gets fierce and it gets intense. And you feel like you're about to fall and you feel like you're about to go down. You need to hold on like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did in that fiery furnace. Because I'm going to tell you what God did. Not only did he send his son to show up in that furnace, but he brought them out of there. And Nebuchadnezzar promoted them boys over rulers of his land. Let me tell you what the devil meant to harm you, to destroy you, to wipe you out. God is going to use to bless you, to 
promote you and make you a ruler in this life. Never doubt what God can do in your life. All we've got to do is trust Him. If you've been facing a battle in your life, I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're older than Methuselah. I don't care. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what the situation is. If you've been facing anything in your life that you feel the devil has sent your way, I want to pray with you tonight. I want to encourage you and cover you with the blood of Jesus. Amen. We want to plead. The, I, you know, let me smack up. We're not going to plead no blood. I don't believe in pleading blood. The blood was already pleaded on the cross. Jesus pleads our case before the Father. We don't have to plead the blood. We can proclaim the blood. There's power in proclaiming. If you're in this church tonight, you believe in the power of prayer. If you're in this church tonight, you believe that Jesus can set somebody free. And I want you at this altar to come down here and pray with us. Lord, I pray that you would just protect them from the Holy Spirit. Lord, pray that you just protect them from the attack of the devil. Lord, pray that you would protect them from the attack of the devils that are in their house, God. I pray the devil will have attacked themselves to them right now. In Jesus' name, that you have to flee. There is no room for you in this family. There is no room for you in this house. There is no room for you in this family. Nowhere near this family. Devil, we come to serve notice to you tonight. You have no place. That you have to flee. This brother is coming to the altar showing his face. In Jesus Christ. Devil, you have to leave. You are not welcome here. Lord, I pray that you would pray for you, that you would touch this, this, this woman that is in his life, God. Lord, right now we pray that the devil that's in his life. I don't know about y'all, church. But I believe we've experienced some breakthroughs tonight. Amen. I don't know about you, but I think the devil's pretty ticked off about right now. <laughs> the devil is not happy. I want to encourage you, church. The battle's not over. And I'm going to tell you, it didn't end at the cross. That's just where it began. Where it began. God's got a special plan for each and every one of us. I want you to look around this room tonight. I want you to see these other people that are around you. I want you to know that these people care for you. They love you. They are here for you. If you've got problems, the Bible says to confess your faults one to another. I believe you've got a happy, spiritual little church here that loves you. That is willing to pray for you. I want to do one more thing before we close. If that's all right, is that all right, Holly? Have I got a couple, like two more minutes? Yeah, so you say you just gonna get up and leave us, huh? <laughs> yeah, a minute and a half. A minute and a half. We want to do one, one last thing. How many of y'all? This is your home church. How many of you love your pastor? Amen. That man right here is the man that God has ordained and set in this position in this church to be your pastor. Amen. He is the shepherd, and you are the flock. Amen. God has anointed him and appointed him for this pulpit. Yes. And like Esther, he has been set here for a time such as this. That's right. There's something inside of this man that God sees. That's why he needs him here for this church. Pastor, I believe that God is fixing to send increase for this church. I don't know if that's in the number of people or, or finances or what it is, but I'm just seeing God's fixing to bring an increase for your church. Amen. And what we want to do is we want to we 
want you to come up here, Pastor. And all of y'all home folks, I want y'all to gather up around you, Pastor. Because if you love this man, after tonight, we've got the kingdom of darkness stirred up. The devil is not happy. The devil is going to come against this church. And we're going to pray for you too. Got husband and wife here, pastors of this church. Church, I want you to pray for your pastor and his wife. I want you to pray that the devil, when he comes against this church, because you guys are fixing to go, go through a season of growth, the devil is going to try to stop that. But after this week, you have the weapons of attack that you know that you can use against you. You know the weapons of attack with your praise, your prayer, and that sword, the word of God. When these demons attack, when they come against you, Pastor, they're going to try to tear your church apart. They're going to try to rip you and your wife apart. They're going to try to come at you, your finances, every, every angle they can. That's the importance of this body of believers behind you, supporting you encouraging you and lifting you up. It's important that we stay in our word because when God, when the devil, when the devil has a plan to destroy somebody, he knows God's got a plan to bless somebody. And he's trying to get you to cuss God before God has the opportunity to bless you. Church, let's pray for our pastor here tonight. Amen. Father God, we come to you tonight. We just thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this church, Lord. We pray that you put a protection, a hedge of protection upon this pastor and his wife and in this church, Lord. God, I pray for each and every member in here tonight that you would just do something miraculous in their lives, God, in a way they know that it's from you. God, I pray for the finances of this pastor and his wife, this family, the leadership of this church. God, I pray that you would bless finances. God, I pray that you would bless marriages. God, I pray that what you have joined together, the devil will not tear apart. Lord, we just declare right now that the devil has no authority in this church. God, I pray that the blood be poured out, poured out upon this church. Let your Holy Spirit reign free in this church, God. When your Holy Spirit wants to move, your spirit can move. God, I pray that you will dispatch angels from heaven to be dispatched to stand guard at the doors of this church. That when the enemy tries to come in, that they will see the sword in that, that angel's hand. That they can know that this is a church that is prepared for spiritual battle. That they know there is no room for the devil in this church. God, there is no room for the devil in the lives of the people in this church, God. Lord, I believe there were some demons cast out tonight. Lord, that's by only by the power of Jesus. And then, But you got to know, church, those devils are going to try to come back. They're going to come back seven times stronger and you've got to be on your guard and make sure you're holding on to the promises of God because if you don't, they will come back and they will be stronger because they're bringing their friends with them. So you as a church, you have to stay united. You have to stay united in prayer. You have to stay united in love and studying God's word and learning how to use that armor. You've got to learn how to give God your praise when you don't feel like giving God praise. You got to learn how to pray when you don't feel like praying. And most of all, I'm going to tell you, when you don't know how you're going to make it through the night, God has already got a plan in store for your future. I'm telling you, what the devil meant for harm, God is going to use to bless you to bring growth to this church. We are in a time of revival. Lord, we need reviving tonight. We thank you in advance for what you're doing in this church. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Well, y'all, I think I know what I did wrong tonight. I guess I was a little bit more long-winded tonight than I was last night. I, I guess I need to go ahead and tell you what went wrong here. I was preaching revival a couple of years ago over in uh, Florence, Alabama. And after that first night, the pastor come up to me and says, Man, brother, that sermon was awesome, but tomorrow night you just need to 
kind of bring it back a little bit on the time. You went a little too long. I said, okay, okay. Next night we got in there and started singing and preaching and God started moving. God, uh, after service, Pastor come up to me and says, man, you were on fire tonight. God really moved. He says, but tomorrow night, can you just like drop back just a little bit? Maybe even just 10, 15 minutes? I said, okay, Pastor. Sure will, sure will. Well, we got to Friday night, and I went longer than I did any night before. <laughs> but it was actually Thursday night. Thursday, or... It was actually, no, it was Friday night. Because after that Thursday night service, when we got there Friday night, the pastor told me that night before service, he said, if you don't mind, can you just try to keep it about 20 minutes? <laughs> I told him, I said, yeah, Pastor, we'll do that. And I told him, and one of the other guys says, hey, I brought you some cough drops. He said, and the way this works, he said, you put that cough drop in your mouth. He said, when that cough drop's done, you're done. I said, okay. So I got up here and was preaching. Well, that cough drop just never disappeared. It never would get any smaller. By the end of that night, I told him, I said, Pastor, I'm sorry, but that's a, some crazy cough drop. I was chewing on a button. 